It has been a while since we've done one of these La Reina del Cyber Explains updates, but I'm here, I am back, I'm in a new setting because we're at my parents' house while I'm transitioning. But we're here with Tequila and we're here to explain what happened with the SolarWinds hack. First things first, we have a new bottle of Casa Amigos Reposado. So we're gonna get this started because we said it was a tradition that aquí en el canal de La Reina del Cyber íbamos a tomarnos un tequilita al principio de cada video. For those of you that did not understand that, take a shot of tequila and I promise if you play it back, you'll figure it out. So that being said, this is this cute little botita shot glass que ya México. This might be a very big shot because we've got the boot filled. All right. And with that, cheers friends. Let's get into solar winds. So delicious. So we're going to talk about what happened with the solar winds breach. So solar winds is a company that makes legitimate software. Recently, what came to light was some of the software that they distribute for legitimate purposes had actually been affected or infected by some adversary. What happened was the adversary was able to take hold of the server that compiles all the software and actually inject their own malicious code into this legitimate application. What does that mean? That means that all of the customers, I think SolarWinds has announced that it's around 18,000 different customers that have downloaded and used the software, took the legitimate software, installed it on their machines, and as a result, were running software that actually had malicious code embedded into it. What was in there was actually a back door that would beacon out to malicious domains that the attacker controlled. So SolarWinds announced that it's been actually since March that the adversaries have been able to inject that malicious code into legitimate applications. Now, why does this matter? Why would an attacker go after SolarWinds? The problem here is the scope of the SolarWinds applications that are being used. You have companies from all across the world, from across industry lines, that use this legitimate software application. Because it is a signed binary, basically meaning that it is approved to be installed, we trust it, it's from a legitimate source, you're not gonna see any issues with it being installed, at least not until now. So essentially what happened is you had companies downloading legitimate software thinking that it was good to go, and unfortunately an attacker had injected themselves into the software distribution process, injected their own malicious code into this legitimate application, and now has a way to surveil every single company where this version of the software exists. If that does not freak you out now, imagine if every single Apple device you took home had some type of surveillance technology into it. So what exactly happened? Microsoft clapped back. They did three different things to make sure that they were properly addressing this malware that really has the potential to take out a lot of big players. So the first thing that they did is they revoked the certificates that are used to authorize this application. Basically, what Microsoft includes in the Windows operating system is a way to say and validate that this application is legitimate and it's allowed to run on this operating system. The way they do that is by signing these applications and it's basically saying, hey, it's coming from a signed source, it's trusted, let it run. What they did is overnight, they actually went ahead and revoked their certificates. So anytime those applications try to run in the future, they're not trusted applications any longer. The second thing here that Microsoft did that I think was really important is they went ahead and updated the Windows Defender AV signatures to detect these malicious versions of this SolarWinds software. Now, the third thing is something that we call a DNS sinkhole. This is where it gets really fun. So, when malware communicates, a lot of times it's not got a hard-coded IP address. It will typically select a domain or it can select from a subset of domains to be able to communicate outward. Why? Because if that IP address is marked as malicious, then their whole binary, the whole program that they got into the environment is kind of caught red-handed and you know, all it takes is a company to block communication to that IP address. It's a little bit harder with domains because domains can resolve to multiple IP addresses depending on how DNS is configured. 
It's easier for them to say, well, this domain resolves to this server here in this country and XYZ server over here. So it basically gives the attacker a little bit more, we'll say resilience with their malware. What you can do on a computer though, is say this domain should never resolve. And that's what we call a DNS sinkhole. It basically means that any requests for XYZ domain are not going to get resolved. So if you tell me who is la reina del cyber and I don't want you to know, then I'm going to be like, can't tell you. I'm going to just zip my mouth and I'm not going to be able to tell you. Think of that as the black hole. That's like, you know, snitches get stitches. I'm not going to speak. It's a DNS sinkhole. I'm not resolving that domain because I know it's been used for bad purposes. So these are three really key ways that Microsoft was able to really start responding to a breach of this scale. So I want to add here that this is a highly, highly sophisticated attack. Now I say that because it's easy to point fingers, but you can't really point the finger at anyone here. This attacker was motivated, had months to work on this breach, and was clearly thinking of a bigger picture. Maybe SolarWinds wasn't the end all be all. That's why they went after the software that they distribute. So yes, they breached one company, but they used that as a jumping point to get to additional companies. It's my expectation that you'll see a lot of breaches coming in the future as a result of this, as companies really start to put together response plans to clean up that malicious binary from their environment. So this is gonna be really, really interesting to watch for the next few months. I think it's going to be more wide scale than we are probably assuming now. There's gonna be a lot of cyber work coming in the future. So that being said, that brings us to our conclusion of what is this solar winds attack that everyone's talking about? I hope you learned something. I hope this has enabled you in your cyber career. I hope you drank a shot of tequila with me and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.